Hey, welcome back. This is episode four of what is becoming one of my very favorite things that I do on the channel. Absurd knife comparison. So today we have the US, uh, QSP Pangolin. It's a D2. Pretty nice knife, actually, that costs, I don't know, about 50 bucks or something like that. It's been a couple months since I bought it, but I bought it with the intention of making this video, which is a comparison to the Hinderer XM18. And uh, although it doesn't have thumb studs, you can pretty quickly see the uh, resemblance here. I probably should be using like an Eclipse because the Eclipse maybe has a slightly more similar, I don't know, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> I recently switched out the scale on the Hinderer also. So it has, a de you know, by uh, default, or I guess um, uh, originally it comes with a G10 scale with a titanium liner. <clears throat> And I bought a Hinderer branded, maybe even see that little Hinderer logo in there, um, titanium textured scale that really just takes this knife to even the next level, uh, both on, per, uh, on um, uh, I think, feel in hand, but also on price. <clears throat> and um, so I thought it would be kind of fun to uh, take this, uh, now that I've got this kind of upgraded version of a Hinderer and compare it, uh, it'd be even more of a, of a, Fun comparison. To me, this is kind of how hinderers should come, especially at the price that they're at, honestly. But um, you know, based once you've added in this two hundred dollars scale, you're talking about a six hundred twenty-five dollar knife versus a fifty dollar knife. Um, so, is it worth it? Uh, you know, what's the uh, what are the major differences? Um, how does this thing really stack up against a, a hinderer? And uh, let's go through the uh, the process. So I, I look at many different elements <clears throat> of what I think makes a knife good. Size-wise, they're almost uh, almost identical. Uh, we'll do a quick weigh-in. I think the Hinderer picked up a couple a couple tenths of an ounce when I switched the scale, but uh, let's get it on here. This scale goes up to seven ounces, which this one is still under. So 5.94 ounces on the Hinderer and 5.36. So if I hadn't switched the scale, it's a little more similar to this. You can see this has a liner uh, in G10. It'd probably be pretty similar, actually. <clears throat> uh, Size-wise and everything, you know, you're not talking about a huge difference. Blade profile, not talking about a huge difference. The uh, the QSP does have more cutting edge because it doesn't have the forward uh, finger choil up here. So you, uh, if you want to choke up on the QSP, not really an option. You're kind of limited in where you can grab the knife. Um, but Hinderer does make no choil knives also. I think on the 3.5, personally, you really want it. Uh, just my my take on it. If you don't have the flipper tab, you know, that, that does make it a little, uh, you know, I think even more comfortable in hand and flexible in hand once it's deployed. <clears throat> um, so let's talk about feel in hand. That's usually where I like to start. Uh, Start with the QSP here. It actually feels very good in hand. Uh, really no hot spots. Um, maybe a tad. The pocket clip's like a little thin. I can kind of, it's not really that bad. I think I'm actually feeling it most in here. It's pretty knocked down on the liner, you can see. Um, but I do still feel a little bit of that edge for some reason, which is kind of weird. You wouldn't really think looking at it that you would but I do feel it a little bit in, on, on my pinky finger in particular. The rest of it feels pretty good. I get a little bit of a hot spot here in the uh, palm of my hand as well, probably because of that pretty sharp angle there. When you're pulling that into your hand, you can definitely feel it. Overall, handle's very generous and uh, is going to accommodate pretty much anyone's hand. Um, unless you have very small hands, you may not find this thing great, but it, I actually feel like you'd probably find a comfortable spot. You're just going to have, you know, an inch of knife sticking out of the bottom of your hand. Um, hinderer. I'd say slightly better in hand for sure. Doesn't have as much of a hot spot on the backside because it's, uh, it's rounder. Still a little bit of the hot spot on the pinky um, in here where it's jimped. It's not, it's not super knocked down right there. It is a little bit rounded off, but it's a little sharp. I can feel that on the pinky a little bit, but probably give the nod 
on the feel in hand to the hinderer slightly, mostly because the materials feel more premium, uh, being full titanium, of course. Um, let's get into deployment. So uh, this is a liner lock, which has its advantages. It makes it much, I'd say, easier for a beginner. So from a deployment perspective, I'd say great knife for a beginner here because you're not likely to put lock bar pressure on yourself by mistake and mess things up. Now the hinderer has the flipper tab. Um, so I'd say, but it's actually not as comfortable. This is actually probably a slightly more comfortable flipper tab, to be honest, um, because of the angle that it sits at. The hinderer one points up and it kind of gets you a little bit. If you were to do that a lot of times and you're not handling knives a lot, um, that might be uncomfortable. So I'd say for a beginner, the deployment's probably the nod to the the pangolin just because it's easy uh, you're not you know there's no thumb stud here so i'd say for someone that's more advanced knows how to keep their hand off the lock bar um, the flipper tab is very effective here and then if you can hold it right which means your finger goes up here and not here if you can hold it right the thumb stud adds in that more advanced um, deployment so i'd say for someone that appreciates knife more the deployment out is a nod to the uh, to the hinderer. Now, putting the knife away is no competition. The uh, hinderer significantly has it beat here. I don't. Doesn't matter if you're a beginner or not. I mean, it might be a little more dangerous for a beginner, but this thing is absolutely like miraculously drop shut. It got even better when I switched the scale. Um, this is uh, uh, quite quite nice here. Uh, so that's really nice. And a big part of that's that. Um, you know, that does have really good access there and is easy to, to get to. Um, has a nice little jimping on it and it's just quality. It's just quality stuff. The whole action there on closing is quality. I do find this one's a little, it's definitely not drop shut. It is more of a, almost like a two-handed fold or like you have to really push it all the way out of the way and then you can kind of shake it down if you want to. Um, but this one's definitely not as good, uh, really double clutchy and you have to shake it down. It is good centering on there. Um, the knife has a good quality overall. It has a good quality feel to it. It's not like high-end quality, but it's, uh, you know, quality. You can tell that this thing's well put together. No, no uh, blade play at all. And uh, it just feels solid. Like for the price, it's, it's really solid. I think it's like, it's somewhere between 50 and $70. I can't remember what I paid for it now, maybe even in the, the, high, the mid forties, I can't recall. Um, so value wise, I'd say, let's just go there right away. Um, it has a very clear nod that this is not a, you know, eight times better knife or whatever that comes out to 10, say it's, say it's 60 just to be safe, 10 times more expensive. It's not feel 10 times better. It's not a 10 times better knife. There's just no, no arguing it. You might like it 10 times more if you want an American made knife and you're looking for drop shuttiness. I could see liking that 10 times more. I probably do like it quite a few times more, like three, four times more. Um, for me, that's, uh, that's pretty uh, awesome. Now, if this was made in the US, probably cost I don't know, 150 bucks anyways. So the ratios start to, you know, right size a little bit, uh, just depending where things are manufactured. Um, looks wise, I think there's also kind of no competition. It's, you know, this particular one, maybe a little polarizing the blue tie. I'd say if you had a full tie one that 90% of people would pick the hinderer. Um, I don't know, not everyone likes that style. This one's definitely a little more tactical looking. And uh, it's, it's definitely cool looking and it has actually a pretty nice grind on it. Um, love this, uh, this sort of, I don't know what you call that. Uh, it's, it's certainly like a satin grind going this direction, but I don't know what this is up here. Maybe it's a um, bi-directional satin grind or something where it's kind of ground this way first and then that way. And I really like the swedge they put on here. It's it's not like you can really get up there anyways because you can't choke up. So, yeah, it's really nice. That's a pretty sweet blade there. But anyways, uh, value-wise and I'd say looks-wise, um, rather, the um, hinderer gets the nod. But this is not a bad-looking knife at all. It's pretty cool. 
this is definitely one of the shortcomings is this sort of shiny wish they'd at least do that kind of like bead blast or something and not go shiny with it i think that'd be a much better look on there it'd match the blade more if they had made that match the blade style maybe even a satin or whatever that would really uh be a nice nice upgrade on the looks but i do like the uh the way that they finish this G10 is very quality, very quality finishing on the G10 for its price point. So it's pretty nice looking. Um, pocket score, this one's a little lighter right now, but you know, without the tie scale, they're probably pretty similar. Uh, Indoor pocket clips, not terrible. This is actually a little, a little strong, stronger than I would have thought for how thin it is. Um, so it might be a little hard to get over the pocket, honestly. And I don't have pants right now like, that are good examples to try it on because I got a zipper on the pocket. But um, anyways, I'd say pocket score is going to be pretty similar on these two. The hinder is a little flatter. This has actually got a little, um, a little, uh, not concave, but uh, whatever the opposite is, contouring on it. So uh, that that is, uh, you know, probably a little less comfortable in the pocket than having something that's totally flat. But I'd say a uh, good trade-off for how, how good it makes it feel in the hand. Um, fit and finish, clear nod to the hinderer. Um, you know, I will say I find it very annoying that hinderer uses these, uh, you know, a flat screwdriver here and a, uh, you know, kind of proprietary in the back. Uh, versus I'd take that every day uh, on the hex, but, um, you know, it is what it is, hinder is hinderer. Um, but generally, the fit and finish on the hinder is a significant step up, and it's noticeable on many levels. Um, reliability, I, I think they're honestly both probably pretty good. Probably give a slight nod to the hinderer just at a, at a guess, but I'd say they both, they're both pretty good. I'd say this liner might have a little more you know durability issue than the uh the hinderer frame lock but they're probably pretty similar honestly probably right in the same uh in the same category overall um blade shape i actually they're both good they're both pretty good. I'll call that one a draw. I think they're both very good. Both good blade shapes. The hinder is a little weird looking though. Like the way it kind of sticks down just doesn't, it's not quite as attractive. So maybe I give a slight nod to the QSP on the blade shape. Just because I always found this thing to be a little, a little funny looking on this spear point. Spear toe? What do they call this thing? Spear point? Spear point. Um, yeah, probably give a slight nod to the QSP on the blade shape. Blade steel, you know, you got 20 CV over here versus D2 over there. So that's a easy win for the hinderer. Of course, price points will determine that to a great degree. Um, I think that's it on the scoring systems. You know, it is pretty remarkable what QSP and Civivi and Wee Knives and others, CJRB, are doing manufacturing out of China. To be able to make a knife that feels this quality for this price, it is uh, definitely, uh, you know, given given the market a run for its money. Um, get the quick wipe down on this guy here, and uh, it's a fun part of doing these absurd knife comparisons because I'm generally doing you know expensive U.S. knives versus inexpensive Chinese knives that are somehow competing with it and that's uh made it fun i'm gonna do some other stuff like one usf one one style of us knife versus another there's some other fun concepts i have in mind that i'll i'll do as i uh mature the uh the content on this particular theme but uh generally this has been pretty fun and i hope you're enjoying it as well yeah if you're just looking for you know a very inexpensive way to get into something that's like the hinderer um honestly you're getting 60, 70% of the knife for one tenth of the cost. So hard to, uh, hard to argue with that. Um, please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think of the, uh, of this absurd comparison and I will see you on the next one. Take care.